What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm actually doing an updated deck profile on Crusadia, a deck that specializes in going second and OTKing your opponent. Now I have this little formula of how to play going second in today's format against a tier limit matchup because to be honest with you, that deck is going to play on your turn anyway, so you might as well build decks to play second and be able to break those boards. And I think Crusadia is just one of the best decks at doing that. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. One. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff. Find it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all that. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers. That's the goal for the end of the new year. Before January 1st, we want to get to 8K and I believe you guys can make it happen. I appreciate every single one of you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys all for watching. And with that, let's get right into the deck profile. Okay, so just before we get into the deck profile, I do want to say that I've been really enjoying playing Go Second OTK decks just because I feel like in this format, when tier limits can play on your turn you might as well just play second at that point and then be able to break their boards as you guys can see in the deck profile and explain a little bit more but you guys can see that you're just playing a ton of board breaker type cards so let's get into the deck profile i'll explain a little bit more when we get into it we're starting off with three crusadia maximus of course three crusadia draco three arborea three reculusia as well as one crusadia leonis now i will say this the reason you're basically maxing out on all the names except for the leonis is because you really want to see a combination of two of these in your hand and that's because if you see two crusadia monsters you pretty much have the combo or have the capability to make the combo where you're gonna otk your opponent so now all you're gonna need in your last four cards because keep in mind we're going second so we're gonna have a total of six cards when it comes to you and in your last four cards if you have those all as go second board breakers then you're gonna be able to win games because you're gonna be able to break your opponent's board and then go for the otk now quickly just to explain the crusadia effects a little bit more maximus essentially lets you target a link monster it can do double damage this turn draco lets you special summon back from the graveyard our Arborea is protection from you from the graveyard. You banish it to protect the Crusadia monster you control, which is really nice. Reclusia is actually really cool because I'll show you guys a different combo where essentially, or not show you, but I'll explain to you guys a combo where essentially you're going to get to pop a card during your opponent controls and you won't need to pop your own card. And then Leonis does piercing damage, which is not as relevant, but that's why you're still playing the two because you just need it as another name more than anything. Then we're playing the one Crusadia Revival, the one Crusadia Testament, as well as the one Crusadia Power. The other thing you can do is just play two Crusadia Power rather than one Testament. Testament is really good when you you're not going to be OTKing your opponent, even though the goal is to OTK your opponent. Sometimes you might not be able to, so that's why I like to play the one testament. But you guys can play two Crusadia Power. Now, Power is a card that I was talking about with Reclusia. Power reads that you can target a Crusadia monster you control. That Crusadia monster is unaffected by card effect except its own. So let's say you have a Regulix or a Magius or even a Equimax, right? And you special summon the Reclusia, you can target the Equimax, target a card your opponent controls, but then you can go ahead and chain Crusadia Power, targeting your Equimax or targeting the Link monster that you're targeting and then that monster is going to be unaffected but Reclusia is still going to be able to pop the other card which is absolutely insane so that's why power is really good but power in general is just really good making your monsters unaffected means your combos are going to go through means you're going to be able to otk that much easier so that's it for the crusadia lineup all you guys are seeing is you're maxing out on the names essentially that you need and then you're playing one of each spell which of course is always going to be searchable with your regulus in terms of your extra deck that's why we're only playing the one of each again testament can be a second power i just like testament for the situations when you're not otking your opponent and then this deck does need a little bit of drop power because you're maxing out on most of your cards we are playing two potted desires i'm not playing prosperity i want to otk i'm not playing extravagance because the extra deck is a little bit too important to be playing extravagance so i think desires is the best way to go in this and you're going to have some other draw power in the deck as well if needed that i'll get into in a little bit but desires is obviously really good because you're maxing out all the names so there's no chance you're going to be banishing all the names right so that's why desires is really good then we're playing a ton of go second cards after the desires you guys can see the rest of the deck is just go second cards that are really good into every matchup essentially we're playing the one change of heart change of heart is one of those power spell one ofs that's really really powerful and then we're playing six kaijus we're playing three gamma seals as well as three godarla the reason we're playing three godarla is because godarla is really good into the floundries matchup you can use it over a berry statue which is very very important in this deck so that's why we're playing godarla but you're also playing the gamma seal because gamma seal is the lowest attack one which means that you can otk that much easier with it so that's why we're playing the six kaijus kaijus are really good into any deck if you're playing it's a sprite matchup the tier limit matchup the floundries matchup these kaijus are very very important and that's why i like them especially going second and if you put it in the correct zone equimax is going to get to gain its attack which is absolutely insane so six kaijus here one harpy's feather duster for the back row matchups and even a lot of the non-back row matchups will have some sort of back row so that's why i like the one feather duster in the main deck playing three regeki now regeki is not great into the tier limit matchup however it is really good into the flu into the sprite matchup and even against 
the tier limit matchup, it's actually not horrible. Yes, they're going to get their effects off, but the really cool thing is if you're just starting off your turn by activating Regeki, your opponent is going to be activating a lot of monster effects, right? Now, once those monster effects are activated, then you're essentially not worried about them activating again because your opponent is going to have used all of them, right? But here's the thing with Regeki that's also really cool is it turns on against the tier limit matchup, the TTT, the Triple Tactics Talent. This card is absolutely insane. So remember how earlier I said Desires is like the only draw card? Well, Tactics can also be a really powerful draw card, especially again in combination with cards like Regeki, combination with Harpy's Feather Duster, because if you're activating this and let's say you pop your opponent's tier limit Scream or their tier limit Suli and they get their effects and cards go to the graveyard and all that stuff happens, right? You know, the tier limit shenanigans essentially, right? That essentially turns on your Triple Tactics Talent and that's essentially going to become either a change of heart for you, a draw two for you, or it can be one of those things where you take a card out of your opponent's hand, but a lot of time going second, that's not as important. But so that's the thing. TTT is really, really powerful in today's format in general, again, because tier limits plays a lot on your turn and Regeki helps you turn on the TTT, which is really nice. TTT is also really good against the full Andres matchup. So keep that in mind. Then again, you guys, we have to be playing these cards because if we want to beat the metagame and the tier zero deck of the format is tier limits, we're playing the Bistials. We're playing three Magnamu, three Druid Swarm, as well as two Sarnir. Now this is kind of been my idea with all the OTK decks. If you guys didn't see the video earlier this week, I came first place with Dinosaur at my locals. I played two tier limits, one Sprite and one Fluandries that week, right? And I went 4-0, which is really, really nice. And the reason for that is because you guys are going to see it's kind of the same formula between Crusadia and Dino. The only difference really is the deck itself. But essentially what the deck wants to do is the same thing. You really just want to play as minimal of a core as possible, everything that's going to help you combo off. And then the rest of your deck is strictly made so that you're able to break boards or in the Bistial's case, being able to stop your opponent from making boards. On top of that, the Bistial monsters are going to be bodies on the board for you. They synergize pretty well with the Crusadia stuff because if you summon this to one of the arrows, you can still get your Crusadia effects off. Also, if you summon it to Equimax, then Equimax is going to get to gain the Magnum Wood attack, which is really, really powerful, or the Druis or the Sarni or whatever it is, right? So that's the really cool thing about this deck is that the synergy between the Bistial monsters and the Crusadia monsters is really powerful, and it just puts extra bodies that can help you OTK, which is really, really nice. So that's why we're maxing out essentially on all the Bistids except for Sarnia. We're only playing two Sarnia. So two, three, and three, I think these are perfect. You want to be playing and maxing out as much as you can on these going second cards to be able to break boards. So that's it for the main deck. It's a 40 card main deck. Moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing the one Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax. We're playing the two Equimax, the two Regulus, as well as the three Magius. These are the most important cards in your extra deck right over here, specifically the Equimax and the Magius. If you're just able to get to this and rank climb, then you're going to be able to OTK a lot of the time because this monster's attack is going to be super, super huge. And again, with effects like Crusadia Maximus, where it can do double damage, with effects like Revival, which are going to essentially make it so that it gains 500 attack. This card becomes very, very powerful in combination with a Kaiju, with a Raigeki, etc, etc. This card can help you just go for game. And that's a really cool thing I like about Crusadia, is it has an inherent win con. Not only can you play all these going second board breaking cards or these board disruption cards, you also have an inherent win con, which is really nice in this deck. And then for the rest of the Link monsters, a lot of them are just toolbox and utility. We're playing the one IP Mascarena, the one Nightmare Unicorn, we're playing the one Apo, the one Access Code. Then because we can make rank four monsters, we're playing the one Baguska, the one Dweller, as well as the one Wallow because we're playing so many of the Bestial monsters. So a lot of this is just toolbox. Another really powerful card that I'm not playing in here that you guys can play in here is Dark, the Dark Charmer. That one is really good in today's format as well. So you guys can play that. I just really wanted to show you the main cards that are really important in this deck are the Magius, the Regulix, as well as the Equimax. Even the Avermax and the Access Code can come up. But the rest of the cards here mostly are just when you're going first and you're forced to go first so you can set some kind of board up so this way you have like ip mask arena into like a unicorn and some sort of disruption as well right if you're forced to go first but generally dark is another really good card most of these cards are just utility right so that's really important to take note of and then for the side deck i'm not really showing you guys a full side deck i just want to show you guys kind of an idea of how you guys should build or what you guys should include into your side deck so i think one card that's really really powerful especially when you're forced to go first when your opponent knows you're playing a go second deck kosher of Fenrir is very very powerful you start off your turn by special summoning this it's a banish for you it's a body for you i really like fenrir then cosmic cyclones is another really important one i think back row removal is very important in today's format especially with dimensional fissure macro cosmo all that kind of stuff running around and because you're a blind go second otk deck you need to be able to get rid of your opponent's back row so that you can continue on to otk right and now in the main deck you guys can see you're really focused against monster boards and that's because in this format monster boards are more prevalent the sprite boards the tier limit boards you need these cards to beat those kind of decks however there are times you're going to run into the random Eldritch matchup or the random back row trap stun deck matchup, right? So for that reason, you do need some kind of back row removal. And so I think Cosmic Cyclones is really good because it's a quick play, but you guys can play Twin Twister. You guys can play just a lot of different back row hate as long as you
you guys have some kind of back row here, I think it's really, really relevant. And then I like to play the zombie world and the terraforming in this deck. Zombie world specifically, again, when you're forced to go first, or if you choose to go first against the Floandries matchup, zombie world becomes really, really powerful against them. So that's just another option for you. You don't have to be playing all these cards. And keep in mind, there's a lot more spots left. You still have five more spots. This is not a full side deck. I just want to show you guys an example of what you guys can be playing in your side deck so that you guys can be successful in today's format. So that's it for the deck profiles. 40 cards in the main deck, 15 cards in the extra deck. Again, dark is another really good option for you. And then the side deck again is just a template. So use it as you will. But I think this deck is really, really cool. And I think Crusadia is something you guys should definitely try out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys kind of see the secret sauce, the secret formula for going second. Okay, yes, the Bestial Monsters are something that's mandatory, but all the other cards, they kind of really synergize together, which is really, really nice. So if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, product openings, vlogs, all that good stuff. You'll see it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe for all of that. Thank you guys all for watching. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers. I couldn't be here without you guys. I appreciate Appreciate every single one of you and with that Spanko sign it out. Peace.